This video is brought to you by OrbitKey. This is my home studio desk setup. As you can see... <clears throat> what do you think you're doing? Just check the mic. Get out, man. Fine, man. Jesus. Not my home studio, by the way. This is my office desk setup. Anyways, let's start with a desk. This is the IKEA's Upspell desk that was built in collaboration with ROG. The frame itself is very sturdy and despite being deemed a gaming-oriented desk, it works just as fine in a more subtle, productive environment. The larger version of the desk is a bit on the expensive side, but it's not too crazy. One thing I didn't like from the beginning was the black tabletop. Although it was cut nicely and had a nice bevel up front and a recess on the back, the finish was collecting way too much dust and most annoyingly skin marks. Luckily a good friend of mine was trying to find a new owner for this dark wood tabletop and I think the end result speaks for itself. At this point the only hint of gaming remaining is the leg graphics which are fairly subtle. The desk has four height memory presets and a nice addition is the USB-A port on the height adjustable controller itself which I always forget about. In terms of cable organization, things are not so bad as I can easily tuck everything inside the integrated cable tray that holds the power... Dude. Sorry man, sorry holds the power outlet as well. The must-have addition to any of my desks is the full-size Balolo shelf, which serves a very interesting purpose here. This is the all black finish, which I think fits well with the tabletop. Since all Balolo shelves have the mounting grid on the bottom, I equipped mine with two trays and the side dock, which keeps my M1 Max MacBook Pro tucked securely without taking up a lot of space. The shelf itself is sturdy enough to carry the weight of the Apple Studio display, as well as half the weight of the leaning bottom display, which I'll talk more about in a second. Because of the monitor configuration, I'm sacrificing some of the front axis to the shelf, yet I still have access to my trays on both sides. Plus, I don't think this setup would have been possible without the Balolo shelf. By the way, if you end up enjoying this video, subscribe because... Yeah, can we? Don't even think about it. Why not? Before we get to the dual monitor setup, I want to give a shout out to the last minute package that I got from Edifier. These speakers sitting on the all black shelf are a match made in heaven. Perfect head level sound, ideal finish on both of them, as well as ideal sound separation. These are the Edifier R1280 dB speakers that feature 42 watts of total power for what Edifier calls distortion free listening. And you know what? I believe them. Even maxed out, these speakers sound fantastic and I can tell the difference as I edit my own footage. As I'm so used to my own ambient and voice recordings, I can clearly distinguish all sorts of sounds I've barely been able to hear even with headphones. Very good sound quality. What's more extraordinary here is the price of those bad boys. Can you guess how much the pair costs? 150 bucks! Okay, I'll put the price and the link in the description and you tell me in the comments if you guessed it right. That makes no sense at this point. Honestly, these are speakers that I would easily recommend as they're so versatile and accessible, especially when you consider what they come with. Various connection options, Bluetooth, remote control, side access, and more. Okay, here's something interesting that you can try at home. In Spotlight, type MIDI and open the audio MIDI setup. And since I have multiple speakers on the desk, I can come and create a multi-output device and tell the Mac to run all these speakers with the exception of the MacBook Pro speakers all at the same time and I can experience a much richer sound overall. Very simple to do. If you have multiple outputs at home, give it a try. So going left to right, I'll start with the various bits and pieces. The brightest thing on the left side is the 8-bit DAW Ultimate Controller, which I recently featured in my favorite Mac Accessories episode. This bad boy comes with its own charging stand and can connect with all sorts of devices, including my Mac. As it is readily available, I can just reach out to it and smash some games while waiting for an export, for example. Check out my Mac Accessories videos if you want to know more about it. Behind the controller, I have the Balolo pen holder where I keep my pens and 
pencils. Next up is an accessory that I use all the time, the Orbit Key Nest Organizer. Its compact design makes it an ideal addition to this desk setup or on the go, as it can accommodate all sorts of loose items and keep them well organized. When I come to the office, for example, I use it as a valet tray where I place my wallet and keys and inside I keep some of my Apple Watch bands, charger and more. On top, once plugged in, the left side of the lid functions as a 10 watt wireless charging pad, which is awesome if I need an additional charger or something that comes in very handy when traveling. The organizer comes with customizable dividers too, which is fantastic. At this point, you might have noticed the key organizer, which is special. This EDC accessory transforms my keys into a neat and silent stack, protecting my items from scratches. This new addition is part of Orbit Key's Star Wars retro collection inspired by iconic vehicles from a galaxy far, far away. It can hold between two and seven keys as well as fobs on the D-ring. Use code this is E for 10% off all Orbit Key items across all international Orbit Key online stores. In the Balola catch-all trays, I also keep other loose items like SSD drives, useful cables and adapters. And next to the left speaker, I have the Xiaomi screen bar controller, which I can press to turn on or off or twist and rotate to change the temperature or intensity of the screen bar, which is placed on top of the studio monitor. Having a screen bar is as important to me as having casters on each desk. It's an inconspicuous accessory that adds just the right amount of necessity to my everyday life. You realize that thing is blocking your camera? Uh, yes, and I'll get to that in a second. Okay, moving on. The CalDigit TS4 dock is a paramount accessory on this desk as it connects all the bits and pieces around here. In fact, you can only give this little thing credit once you look at it on the back and realize how many things are plugged in. The CalDigit dock features 18 ports and one of my favorite features is the fact that both monitors and the laptop cable run from the back, allowing for a clean front setup. Continuing to the right, I have the M1 Max MacBook Pro, which is cradled inside the Balolo dock. Why is your mouse adapter not plugged into your dock? because it stutters when I use it and it has to be plugged in directly to the laptop. Why? Really, do we have to discuss this now? Fine. Anyway, on the right side of the laptop, I have the Banks headphone stand and charger, which is made with the AirPods Max in mind. As you can see, the shape doesn't allow for the AirPods Max mesh to stretch like on other stands, and the added bonus of having an additional charger is Nice. My main phone charger, however, is not that one. I usually top up my phone on the Nomad Stand 1, which is one of the heaviest and most minimal looking chargers out there. Because of its weight, this 15 watt charger stays firmly in place whenever I grab my phone from it. It comes in two colors, by the way, and I think the white version would have been contrasting this angle a bit better, but the Panda, as I call it, looks just as good. So my main monitor is the Apple Studio Display. I have a separate review video of it, which I'll link in the description if you're interested. This 27 inch 5K display with its 600 nits sustained brightness is one of the best looking and most reliable displays I've used. For the longest of time, I've been using the built-in speakers of this monitor as they're absolutely fascinating. But now that I have the edifiers, I will keep them quiet for a while. I ordered the monitor with the optional height adjustable stand, which is a piece of art on its own. But for this setup, I could have easily gone for just the standard stand because of the Balolo shelf. Nevertheless, I prefer to have the flexibility, especially knowing that I'll most likely tear down this setup and experiment with something different at a later point. Now, as Mr. Rambles pointed out, the webcam of the studio display is covered by the screen bar, which can always be pushed to the side if I want to use it. But I don't find a reason for that because I now use the Insta360 Link webcam. I recently mentioned this over-engineered webcam and I called it a webcam from the future for a few good reasons. First of all, it comes with a three axis gimbal which allows this webcam to track me and to even create presets for different positions and angles. Second, this webcam has a microphone array with noise cancelling features and provides great audio for my occasional FaceTime meetings. Seriously, I can't ask for more when it comes to a webcam. Now, the weirdness of this setup is achieved by the bottom vertically stacked Asus monitor. This 24 inch monitor surprisingly is considered a portable one as it comes with a handle that serves as a hook and 
plenty of other mounting features, which I share in my last video. That specific handle is what allows me to put it at an ideal angle straight on the Bololo shelf. Even though this is a full HD display, which looks miles apart from the 5K display on top, I don't mind that, as I use it as a timeline monitor or an assistant to my main display. It might hold my finder or my email client and most often my video editing timeline, where I don't require the most accurate and sharp image. Despite that, I'm pleasantly surprised at how bright and vibrant this display is, it being IPS, which has built-in speakers as well, by the way. The only downside of this monitor is these side ports, which in my scenario is not ideal, but kudos to Asus for creating such a versatile monitor. Keep in mind that this setup is more of an experiment for me. I want to see if I'll find this vertical stacked setup useful in my workflow, so having such a big monitor in the bottom might not be the best solution for you. In fact, I'm already thinking of replacing that monitor with a smaller one like a 21 inch or even 15.6. The mouse and keyboard up front are placed on top of Orbit Key Slim leather pad in this creamy white color. I think this mouse pad was made for this setup as it fits perfectly and locks the Asus monitor in place, not allowing it to slide down. If you want to know more about my mouse, keyboard and stream deck setup, you can jump over to my Mac accessories video here. Like and subscribe to the channel as well as my newsletter. And as always, it's been an absolute pleasure. This is E, over and out.